What's up everybody? Pat with Infinite Fitness coming at you guys with another video today. Today's video, pretty passionate about this topic, is all about reverse dieting. Um, I think reverse dieting is a very, very useful tool that not enough people utilize. Um, and we're going to get into why that is, who it's useful for today. Um, but I want to start out by explaining what a reverse diet is. So a reverse diet is basically a period of controlling your calorie surplus and putting your body in a slight calorie surplus that is small enough to prevent excessive weight gain. Now, one thing that a lot of people do not know about metabolism is that metabolism is not a fixed thing. It's actually a window, or it's thought to be a window. It hasn't been proven yet, but it's thought to be a window. So your maintenance calories are not necessarily 2,000. They might be somewhere between 1950 and 2050, 2000 being right in the middle. So instead of it being a fixed number, it is a range of numbers. So what a reverse diet basically is, is it's a tool used to slowly increase metabolism by adding low amounts of calories into the diet week over week. Now, for some people, this can be as low as 25 to 50 calories per week. For others, it might be 50 to 100 or more, depending upon the rate that you're going at. Now, the second thing is, who can use a reverse diet? So, reverse dieting is for anyone, everyone. Um, there are a few main subsets of people that they're useful for. Um, bodybuilding competitors being one of the main ones, especially after a show. Um, also, people that cannot sustain their current calorie deficit. So, let's say that someone has been dieting for a decent period of time and their calories needed to maintain a deficit are 1,400, um, but they cannot maintain that level of calories, they could utilize a reverse diet to increase their metabolism and then diet in the future to lose more body fat. Um, competitors, people that are having trouble maintaining a deficit, people that wanna eat more food, so if you just are not happy with the amount of calories that you're eating every day, you could slowly increase your metabolism and eat more food every single day. Um, and that's useful for a lot of populations, but we'll get into that. And the last thing is why are reverse diets useful? Reverse diets are very useful because they are a way to increase metabolism without accruing a ton of body fat. So if you've worked really hard to lose a lot of body fat um, or get your body to look a certain type of way, the last thing you want to do is pump your calories back up and lose a ton of the progress that you've made. So a reverse diet is a slower approach to increasing calories that leads to, in many cases, minimal body fat gain. In other cases, you can also see some fat loss with it, but we'll get into that. So anyway, this is kind of just the overview of you know, what we're gonna talk about today. So I wanna get into the steps of going about a reverse diet, and um, let's get into it. So, where do we begin? Well, when we're starting a reverse diet, the first thing we have to do is we have to establish a baseline or starting point. So I should start out by saying that reverse diets do not have to be used solely for people that have just dieted. I think that reverse diets are most commonly used in that situation. Um, so for this particular step, the first thing that you wanna do when <clears throat> employing a reverse diet is figure out where your current maintenance calories are, where your metabolism is. So. When we calculate current maintenance calories, if you are coming out of a calorie deficit and going right into a reverse diet, generally speaking, every one pound of weight loss is equal to around 3,500 calories of deficit per week. So if I have a client that's losing a half a pound per week, generally they are in a 1,750 calorie deficit which would be around a 250 calorie deficit per day, 1,750 calories divided by seven, that's the number that you get. So if you are coming out of a calorie deficit, you want to generally take your average weight loss over the past two to four weeks to give you an idea of how much weight you're actually losing. So if you've lost an average of one pound per week over the past four weeks, you can assume that you were in a deficit of around 3,500 calories. Now, there is a little bit more complex math to this equation that we're not gonna get into. I think for most people, 
using this particular number, every one pound equals 3,500 calories, is close enough to begin. Um, and just remember that metabolism is very fluid, so we'll talk about that as we get a little bit deeper in the video. So once you have calculated your current metabolism, now it is time to move on to step two. So now we are on to step two. Step two is determining our rate of increase for each week. So there are three ways that we can go about increasing calories for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of reverse diet. The first approach we can take is a conservative approach. This would be an increase of three to 5% calories, overall calories per week. Now mind you, that is a very small increase. For most people, that's gonna be between 25 and 50 calories per day per week, which is nothing. That would be like eating three to four extra pretzels, or like a serving of pretzels or something like that. The second rate of gain is a moderate approach, okay? Now this is gonna be an increase of five to 8% overall calories per day, per week. An aggressive approach, 8% plus increase in overall calories per week. So let's dive into all three of these, who they're useful for, the pros and cons, and we'll get into that. A conservative approach, okay? The pro to this particular approach is that the chances of body fat gain are very, very minimal. Because we are increasing calories at such a small rate over time, the chances of seeing body fat gain using a reverse diet of this speed are very, very low. Now the con to using this particular approach is it takes much longer. So if you're gonna be on the low end of this conservative approach, let's assume that 3% of your daily calories is an increase of 25 calories per week. Generally with a reverse diet, personally, I would like to see an increase of two to 300 calories minimum on overall metabolism, if not more than that. So let's assume that this person wanted to raise their metabolic rate by 200 calories per day Assuming everything went perfectly, which it usually doesn't, and we're gonna talk about that a little later, that would be two months of reverse dieting before this person could move on to their next phase. And mind you, a 200 calorie increase is very, very low, okay? For most people, using a conservative approach like this, this is gonna be a three to 12 month process, at least, okay? The moderate approach, okay? This is gonna be kind of your middle of the road option. You probably will see some body fat gain using this particular approach here, but it's not going to take as long as the conservative approach would. So if you're someone that's a little bit more concerned with you know, increasing your metabolism or trying to increase your muscle mass or something along those lines and you're okay with a little bit of body fat gain, this is probably a better approach for you to take to a reverse diet. The third approach, is an aggressive approach. And so this particular approach is almost bordering on a lean bulk, if you will, um, or a bulking you know, method, if you wanna call it that. This approach is going to take the least amount of time, but we are also going to see the most amount of body fat accrual using this particular approach. Now, personally, I think that each one of these approaches has certain people that will fit well into them. So if I had a just, day-to-day -day client that wants to get a little bit healthier, um, has just gotten out of a fat loss phase and is kind of worried about their body composition, I would most likely put them into the conservative category here and just slowly increase their metabolism over time. Now, if I had a client that was okay with a little bit of body fat gain but was in some sort of rush or had a time, time crunch or time consideration to get into another fat loss phase, I might take that person and put them into the moderate category. Now, for an aggressive approach, there's really only two types of people that I would put into this category. One, people that are concerned with building muscle, even if they, and, and are not as concerned with body fat gain, um, but they're not necessarily in a rush to build muscle, but they wanna build some. The second thing is this is really good for physique and bodybuilding competitors when they come out of a show. And the reason why that is, is people in this particular category, people in that particular category, 
are usually bordering on unhealthy levels of hormones and you know other things and their body fat levels are at a dangerously low level so personally i don't want to keep someone at that low level of body fat for longer than they need to be which again would be the day of their show and then they try to you know reverse diet back up to normal body fat levels so an aggressive approach would be best for someone like that um, unless they weren't feeling too, too crappy, or if they were okay with feeling crappy for a little bit while longer, maybe it would go a little slower, but this approach is gonna be best for people in that category. So when you're deciding on a rate of gain, you wanna take all of the things that we just talked about into consideration to figure out which one of these categories is going to be best for you to utilize when you do your reverse diet. Now, once you figure this out, it's time to move on to step three. All right, so we're on step three. This is the last step that we're gonna cover in this video, and this step includes monitoring the process, okay? So monitoring the outcomes of the reverse diet. Now, the first step in monitoring outcomes is to use markers of progress. So things like scale weight, things like body fat percentage, things like you know body measurements, you know circumference measurements, all of these things can be used to determine how we're doing with our reverse diet. So usually I will use a combination of the three of these, if not other things, to kind of determine where people are at with their reverse diet. But you do not have to use all of them. You can use some of them. Um, and we'll talk about kind of the reasons why. So the first measure that we can use is scale weight. Now usually when I am reverse dieting someone, there are going to be weeks where the scale will jump. So this might be a half a pound, this might be a full pound, so on and so forth. So let's say that I give someone a 5% increase in calories and the following week I see a one pound average weight gain. What I am going to do the following week is I am not going to add in any more calories. I am going to keep them at that same level of calories and see what happens. Now in most cases, the scale weight will come back down. It might come down a half a pound, it might come back down a full pound, but it will come back down. In other cases, it will not. So, in either of these situations, whether the scale weight comes down or it doesn't, my next increase in calories would probably be closer to 3% instead of 5%, especially if this person was concerned with not increasing body fat levels throughout this process. So I would use the scale weight as a marker of how things are going. Now, let's assume that I saw the scale weight jump but their circumference measurements did not change all that much. Their waist was still the same, so on and so forth. For the second week, I would probably keep their calories exactly the same. I would not increase. And then I would take these again, see what happened. And if the weight was still the same and the measurements were still the same, I would probably make another 5% increase in calories. So the reason why we use these markers is they give you an idea of if what you are doing is working or not. So if someone's scale weight is climbing very rapidly, it means that they are probably putting on more body fat than if their scale weight is climbing slowly. So if you have someone, or if you in particular, are concerned with how quickly you are gaining body fat, if your scale weight is moving very quickly, it might make sense to slow down your rate of gain, okay? But this is, this is the nuance of this stuff, because obviously, you know, before we talked about there was a conservative, a moderate, and an aggressive approach, those are not hard numbers. Like you do not have to increase your calories the same way every single week. You want to use the outcomes that you're getting and the measurements that you're getting to determine what the next step is, okay? And now the reason why stuff like this happens is you have to remember that metabolism is not a constant thing. So for example, when you start giving people extra calories, there are a lot of processes in the body that become upregulated. Metabolism starts to upregulate um, steps per day start to upregulate. People tend to start moving around more. Uh, Non-exercise activity thermogenesis increases. So there's a lot of things going on inside of the body and the body is not necessarily a closed system. There's always you know, new inputs coming in, new outputs coming in. Your sleep will affect things. You know, the time of day that you're eating will you know, maybe make your scale weight fluctuate, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're putting body fat on. So it's important to monitor as many things as you can when you're 
executing a reverse diet, especially if you're concerned with how much body fat you're gaining throughout the process. But you want to use these outcomes to make educated choices for what the next step is. So that is our video for today. I hope all of you enjoyed it. I want to give you guys a quick recap on what we talked about today. We talked about what a reverse diet is, how quickly you should be reverse dieting, and how to monitor progress as you are reverse dieting. Now, the last thing I want to close with is I want to close with who can benefit from reverse dieting and why. If you are someone that has recently lost weight and you are finding that the level of calories that you are currently eating is not sustainable, a reverse diet is one of the best steps that you can take now that the diet is over. It is possible to increase your metabolism back to previous levels or close without gaining a ton of body fat if you go about the process slowly and mindfully. Second, people that simply just want to eat more. Even if you have not been in a deficit recently, if you're not enjoying the level of calories that you're allowed to consume or able to consume without gaining body fat, then a reverse diet would work very well for you because that would increase the amount of calories that you could eat on a daily basis. Three, people that have competed recently. If you are coming out of a competition prep diet and you are at very, very low levels of body fat, one of the best things you can do is slowly return your metabolism to baseline without going into a full bulk or full you know, overconsumption mode. That will prevent excessive body fat gain post-show and put your physique in a better place to diet the next time around. So reverse dieting is very useful. Personally, I think that most people, if not all, should utilize one in their fitness journey at some point in time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoy what we're putting out here, please subscribe to our channel, leave a comment on one of the videos. You can also find me on Instagram at pat underscore if personal training. As always, stay strong.